Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, or just COPD for short, think of the double C's. C for chronic air trapping, resulting in reduced gas exchange due to inflammatory damage to the lungs. And C for CO2 that is high. Patients can't fully breathe out due to the limited airflow and the inability to fully exhale. So we get air trapping and high CO2. Now, COPD is not asthma. The big difference here is that asthma attacks are reversible. They're momentary flare-ups that come and go and usually resolve with age. Now, COPD is irreversible damage to the alveoli and the bronchi of the lungs. That progresses over a number of years, typically caused by smoking. Now, for causes and risk factors, the number one is smoking. This is the number one primary risk factor on the NCLEX and most nursing exams. So the memory trick, just think chronic destruction of the lungs for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, some other causes are from other long-term exposure to respiratory irritants, like being a car mechanic where we breathe in chemical fumes, or even being a wildland firefighter from that dust and smoke. But again, smoking is considered the number one primary risk factor, secondary to chemical exposures like car mechanics. Now, Kaplan mentions a risk factor for COPD, a client that has smoked for more than 30 years. Now, for the pathophysiology, there are two types of COPD, emphysema and chronic bronchitis, commonly called the pink puffer and blue bloater. Now, most NCLEX questions don't really focus on the patho here. You like that, did you? Well, click here and get access to over a thousand fun visual videos, 300 study guide cheat sheets, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Neatly organized in our new app. Click here to get started for free. But it may come up on your nursing exams. So again, think C in COPD as C for chronic air trapping and lung hyperinflation because air cannot get out of the lungs. So for emphysema or pink puffer, these clients are typically well perfused, they're pink, but they have difficulty breathing, so just think puffer. This results from damage to the alveoli, which results in loss of lung elasticity and loss of inflation of lung tissue due to the loss of surfactant that helps the lungs stretch. So we get a loss of lung tissue recoil and end up with air trapping inside the lungs. And on the other side, for chronic bronchitis, think blue bloater, because they are usually cyanotic, which turns them blue. And this happens due to inflammation of the bronchi, that smooth muscle hypertrophy, and contraction within the bronchi itself, as well as excessive mucus production, resulting in a chronic hacking cough and reoccurrent infections. Now, in terms of signs and symptoms, for emphysema, think pink puffer. So we use the acronym PINK, P for pink skin and pursed lip breathing. The very earliest sign is that they are huffing and puffing, so just think puffed out cheeks and pursed lips for pink puffer. I is for increased chest, known as a barrel chest. N is for no chronic cough or very minimal cough. And K is for they keep on tripoding to get air exchange. So Kaplan mentions a client with emphysema You'll find hyperresonance when percussing the lungs. So yes, think high air trapping for hyperresonance there. And on the other side, for chronic bronchitis, we get that blue bloater. So just use the acronym BLUE. B for big and blue skin, known as cyanosis. This is hypoxia. So just think big and blue. Typically our patients are obese and have a blue body. L is for long-term chronic cough and sputum, which cough is the earliest indicator for chronic bronchitis. U is for unusual lung sounds. We typically hear crackles and wheezes. And E is for edema that shows up peripherally. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys. See you next time.